Hello, this is Brian McCarthy from Bolt and Break, and we're going to be discussing how to make this. I did this using volumes um, in Cinema 4D, some really simple techniques. Let's jump into Cinema 4D now and see how it was done. So here we are in Cinema 4D. Um, we're going to start off by making two spheres. Sphere underscore one. Hold control, duplicate it. Rename this to zero underscore two and create a null and call the null mesh. Select our two series by holding shift and select, put it into our mesh null. And then what we want to do is just kind of offset our sphere to the left or right a little bit. One of the spheres, make that full screen. Um, increase the radius to about 140 centimeters. Maybe down a little bit, maybe 130 will do. Cool. So the next thing we want to do is apply a volume builder and bring our null in under that. And then we want to get a volume measure and put our volume builder under the volume measure. The volume measure is bringing these two objects together using uh, a voxel type modeling system. You don't need to know much about that for now, but it's just a different way of rendering and using geometry to create shapes. So let's just display our lines here and you can kind of see if we pull this away and then what it's doing. It's kind of looking for the geometry and sticking to a kind of little bit like Velcro. Cool. So. Now, we can do a lot of interesting things with some very simple and kind of um, older modifiers in cinema now with this volume builder. So let's start by applying explosion effects and put this under our null. You can see we're getting closer to that abstract aesthetic that I showed in the beginning of our video. So the first thing we want to do with our explosion effects, we can. I would uh, encourage you to play around with these values yourself, but uh, I would bring down the gravity to, let's say, about two. And go into cluster and bring up your density to about 2000, maybe. Yeah, cool. Now, this looks a bit uniform and blocky. Maybe we want to actually add more strength or actually increase the time, maybe. Let's just have a play around with these. Yeah, let's do that. Let's increase the strength a little bit here. And then if we go back into our modifiers and we look for twist and we put that under our mesh as well, fit to parent, change the mode to unlimited and just start to really twist this. And you can already kind of see something quite cool emerging in terms of how kind of um, modular this is to work with. Change R to K, bring it in a little bit. We could even bring R So what I did here, I changed the size of the Y axis to 102 centimeters. And you can kind of see there's some really cool abstract looking shapes here. So let's go out of a camera view. Let's put all of this into a null call this volume BK. And we want to keep this null just in case we want to go back and make any changes. We're going to make this editable. So let's add a camera to our scene. And this is kind of really where you start to see the look emerge because it's all about the camera angles. So let's go into our camera view. Let's move our camera. Bring it right in here and you can kind of start to see how we're getting that look. Let's maybe tilt our camera a little bit there and tilt it here. And there's a lot, there's a lot of fun to be had here. So you can kind of see you have all these kind of crevices and kind of bits of mesh hanging off. So let's kind of maybe place it here, something interesting here. Now, the issue here is um, this is quite blocky. It's 
come out of our camera view again. So we have this kind of blocky mesh that's kind of very malleable, but the issue is it's a bit too blocky at the moment. And there are several ways we could go about doing this. We could start with adding um, an SDF smooth into our layers panel in the volume builder, or we could um, maybe do that and add a remesher and have a look at that. Now, um, that's all good. I think that's all good and great if, if you kind of need optim pure optimization in the scene. If it's something like a still, I think it's fine to just, you know, um, let's just duplicate this and, you know, turn that into a mesh itself, hide these layers. And just kind of, you can just put a sub subdivision surface modifier on it. And that's fine uh, for now because you're not really animating too much. If you are animating, my suggestion would be, you know, you want to get rid of this little block here. Kind of, you want pure optimization, maybe use remesh and SDF modifier. Use them to optimize the mesh. Now there's a, you could do a whole tutorial on those sections. It, it can be quite complex um, and fickle, uh, those tools. But for now, let's just kind of bring this down to about one here. Um, also, just a note, if you are using Octane or Redshift, um, I would not use a sub subsurface division modifier. I would use uh, Redshift or Octane to actually smooth out this geometry. And you can start to see, you know, there's, you have this kind of like cave-like sequence coming up. You can move it around. So there's, there's kind of a lot of fun to be had with the, uh, volume builder in Cinema 4D. Let's delete this sub surface division modifier. Uh, let's turn our backup on and let's add some other modifier on here. Let's add Spherify and already it's cool because it, Spherify is getting that twist and explosion effects to kind of wrap around into this very cool weird looking mesh change the radius so there's a lot of fun to be had and you know I suppose you could you know maybe do some trickery and get some maybe liquid looking stills and stuff here um, but this is kind of just a kind of introduction to using the volume mesh builder I uh, hope you enjoyed it let me know in the comments below remember to subscribe um, is there anything you'd like to see in future tutorials let me know uh, thank you for watching and goodbye